Okay. Calling the calling the meeting business. meeting to order here. Um, uh, why don't we start with introductions? Uh, I'm J.D. Miller, board chair. Linda Hayes, director of the Council on Aging. Lisa Thornton, activities and volunteer coordinator of the Council. On Paul Jamal. Lucille Sarantino. Elaine Shabari. Janice Lamar, board member. Janice Desmond, board member. Leslie James, board member. Gordon Price, vice chair. Dale Baylog, board member. Very good. So we are, we we missed our February meeting because of, of snow. snow. Yeah. And then we had conflicts for scheduling the following week. So we, so this is our first meeting really since January. We're going to review January minutes in a few minutes. They're yes. coming hot off the press. Um, <coughs> but maybe we, and we've got a guest coming in re relatively soon. So why don't we, should we? Jump right into the directory report. Yeah, Melinda. Thank you. Hi, hi everybody. Welcome back. I told March just came up fast. Knew it would, so just as well. Um, so in my report, uh, just mention of a few collaborations or events. Um, Seeing I continue to attend those meetings, which is interesting, though I didn't get to go in March. I was there in February. Uh, that is the, the disaster relief, um, primarily started through, you know, help after fires, but that has expanded and certainly we work well together and they're a great group. Uh, St. Patrick's Day celebration tomorrow night at the River Club is mentioned there and that I mention it because of the Citra Cultural Council awarding us money uh, to put towards the entertainment and also the River Club donating both the venue and a buffet dinner, which is fabulous. And, and in the name of the seniors wanting to do something for the senior community here in Situate, and it was just fabulous. Cause I was out looking for venues um, because at that time St. Mary's, who we usually go to, wasn't available. And then you just start to punt, and she called back enthusiastic to help. So that was nice, and it's great, and we, I mentioned it later in the report, but 180 people. Really? <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I'm scared. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. well, they, that'll hold that. Oh, it will hold that. Yes. Yes. She said that was okay. I just didn't think we'd get there. Uh, yesterday, I mentioned in the report, and originally I had it in there anyway, pre their attending, but it just so happened now it was yesterday. Uh, we had agreed to provide the venue for a presentation by the Grantham Group, who's a private development company who had been engaged by the Housing Authority to design and promote this 30 unit affordable housing complex to go in behind the current Central Park building. Um, and obviously they want people to know about it and to support it. Um, and in many ways, because they have to go before town meeting in April, which is April 26th, to vote the CPC funds that have already been approved for this project to help fulfill the requirement of the CPC funding to go towards affordable housing. So it was a fabulous presentation. Um, Stephen Coulter also came, who's the chairperson of the Housing Authority here in Situate and has been, I think, for several years. But that is like this, a volunteer um, board. And we had six people come to hear it, which was disappointing, um, only because it's fabulous and the six people who were here all want to be on the list. <laughs> and, you know, and I feel like I, they should be. Right, right, right. <laughs> they should get first dibs because they were here. Um, but it's important, and it's important, I think, for people who are supportive of this and hopefully more to follow to be at town meeting to vote for it because really, you know, that's a wild card. You, you don't know how people might respond, and especially if they don't know about it beforehand, then they don't have a chance to process. So the more um, people hear about it and realize, you know, not only was it just a beautiful design, but it's a very important asset, I think, for the community. Um, it's based on income. Um, so there were two tiers he mentioned, but essentially the rents would be somewhere around 900 to 1,000 for one tier and then less for another tier. There's only 30 units and you know, six people wanted them yesterday and yeah. so there you go, they're gone. Anyway, so I do want to mention that in terms of just supporting it and also having had them here. And then the- Linda, did yes. you see the layout in terms of where that, is it proposed to be? Immediately behind the it is immediately housing. behind, yeah, right behind the, where the parking and is now in the back. Not, 
impede on the plan no. B? Um, no, it doesn't, it doesn't touch it. It did not impede on, oh. on what may be, might be the senior center. Mm. Okay. Well, okay, yeah. I, yeah, it was in the paper this morning. Yeah. Okay. Well, it was yeah. talked about by them. Well, There's no relationship at all to that. But the building is not going to be on what, what could be. Another piece of land. Exactly. It's one of the proposed areas, nine yeah. acres behind the library and behind <coughs> Central Park, which last is further paper? back. Did you say last night's paper? Yeah, yeah, because oh. I am, yeah. That I'm would be today's. 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 When's the meeting? Today's. When, when is the meeting? Town meeting? Yeah. Town meeting is April 26th. No, no, it was a meeting last night. Oh, it was last night. Oh. oh our, our meeting? No, now we're getting confused. Yeah. No, <laughs> this is a town meeting. It was a, it was yesterday a afternoon time? Yes. Was it the cafe talk? Yesterday. The morning. cafe talk at the senior center was yesterday oh, here. Yeah, I, I, I think people are getting yeah. Yeah. confused. Okay, that's... All right. Nothing on anyone, just... I, I have the answer. Um, safety inspections through the fire department. Um, I ac actually ended up going on a, a couple today because uh, Laura was out sick. But um, the collaboration with the safe with the fire department for doing inspections to make sure you know smoke alarms are up to date. They're replacing them for free. That was part of some grant funding that they were able to um, receive. And it's a nice way for us to connect with people we may not know or have come to the senior center. And it was useful. Um, it, it was a couple of hours of my time today, and um, we have another date already scheduled, and about 12 people had requested the inspections. Um, it had been in the paper and publicized elsewhere, I'm sure, through the fire department. So that was nice, valuable. My, my guess is more, since the codes have changed, probably there's more smoke detectors or CO2 alarms required now than even 10 years ago. Yeah. Did you find that? I mean, when you went into whatever you toured today, did you see that? Well, you know, they sometimes they don't know where, I don't know why they wouldn't be in the right place in the first place, but if people have redone their homes, right. or, uh, one, they didn't have one in the downstairs, you know, in okay. the first floor. Yeah. That yeah. They had one upstairs, but not to, so he yeah. actually literally put one in. Yeah, good. Um, someone else, this, yeah, there was some issue, he had to move it, because yeah. it wasn't, it, it was wasn't in the right place. Uh, right. So. Uh, they have both a combined CO and smoke detector, and then they have the regular CO that just gets plugged in. Yep. So, yep, Good. it's wonderful. Good. And it, not only it's a chance for us to talk with them, but then one of the, the lieutenant that was with me today was going back to help them with a, a laundry washing machine vent, which wasn't good Properly either vented. and okay. yeah. they didn't have anyone to come in and he's going to go back and do that again so it's great john should be here to hear that <laughs> um so other updates friendly visitor program uh we are poised um two people were two people were um trained already in january and uh just making matches presently um, to send them out and the other volunteers who have already volunteered still need to be trained uh, we have like three tentative dates the end of march okay to, for the, so it's for the yep, next it's, training yep um the feasibility study is underway for the four properties uh put on the block by the town and nicely enough, uh, the architects have contacted me for you know, just another informational interview to know the kinds of things that we would be doing in a building that they might be involved in designing or placing. So that will happen next week. Um, we did post a position for a new driver or drivers, frankly. We would probably take more. <laughs> Um, just because it's so it's variable, but yet we really need to have good backup for yeah. availability, yeah. and and maybe even increased usage of the van. So um, we have someone hopefully that will be able to bring on, but would probably consider others if they were to apply, which is great for Jean. Uh, my FY18 budget. I was at the in front of the advisory committee last week and the board of selectmen just this past Tuesday night to have that reviewed and approved, um, so they did. Uh, the significant items, just it's a level funded budget, in fact, $221,000 last year, $221,000 and some change this year. You know, just maybe some things shifted. Electricity is so high, 
Um, so that's a big item. And believe it or not, the most expensive thing we do is the trash pickup. Yeah. Oh. And it keeps going up. Mm -hmm. It's it's mm -hmm. crazy mm -hmm. high. And we were thinking maybe we could just offload it and maybe just have the DPW do it here, but we need the dumpster. They don't have the same vehicles that could do that. So anyway, it's, we're stuck with it right now, but it's really, really expensive. Um, and lastly, $2,000 was, was added actually for us to um, tie into the new phone system at Town Hall. So we will have an upgraded phone system sometime within the next, you know, three to four or five months. Good. Which is good news. Uh, the kitchen has been inspected by the Board of Health and just pending a <laughs> couple more um, certifications uh, a couple of us have to get online and get uh, allergen training and um, I truly think that's it. I just have to submit the paperwork to the Board of Health and then I'm actually, we're actually done. That was a process. The dishwasher works. Everything's good there. Awesome. Uh, I thought worth mentioning too is Patrick O'Connor is scheduled now to come to us once a month for a, a coffee or you know perhaps individual appointment appointments if people are requesting them. He was actually scheduled to start last month and ended up sending someone who worked for him, which which actually ended up being nice. I went to high school with him, <laughs> so that was funny. Uh, you can't go anywhere without knowing someone from Weymouth. And uh, so I think that will be nice, actually, and I think they publicized that on their own. So we hadn't had a chance to put it in our newsletter, so two people had come, and he sat with them for the hour, and they had discussions. So I think that was worthwhile. Who is Patrick O'Connor? The state senator now, who, who had... Headland, right? So I replaced him at first in, an, in a you know, late election, and then had to be reelected last September, which he was. Young guy. Because Headland became mayor of Quincy. Weymouth. Weymouth. A Weymouth. Yeah. Yep. So the position was open. Yep. And then um, seniorities, we taped our first episode of the cable television program with John a couple of Fridays ago. I uh, don't know if you've seen it yet. Certainly look forward to doing <laughs> a tighter job, but it was it was great. Um, so the Avail idea is available I on SCTV, correct? Yep, and YouTube. You can find it on YouTube, so yeah. you can watch it at your leisure and kind of stop and start a play. Um, you can actually also download it as well. If you actually want to copy for yourself, or you just want to copy for here or something, it's all in your right to YouTube. So I, I can even show you how to do it. Okay. Someone put it on Facebook as well. Yeah. So, you know, the, uh, so you could just okay. watch the entire... Very nice. It wasn't me. I don't know how to do that. Oh. <laughs> I'm lucky I don't know how to work my iPad at all. It was. <laughs> but it was, it was good. That was the first time I saw it. So I'd mentioned before at board meetings that this was you know, pending and we finally got it going. JD was on camera with me. And the idea, of course, is an introduction to the Council on Aging and what we do at the Senior Center and then to bring each of the staff in succession, really, and just talk about their roles and more about what what they do here and what we provide through their roles uh, or elsewhere, and then even bring in community resources and town town resources that we collaborate with. Um, so hopefully that's several programs that we can provide. Um, JD already mentioned the sand buckets, which is great, and the people who did receive them, numbering about 20, 25, we're happy. Uh, the Situate Education Foundation grant is due at the end of the month, so um, I am hoping to be able to complete the ideas we've bounced around have been um, something technology driven and also intergenerational, which I think they're looking for in order to know that it's really a community um, provision that they might give the money toward and also uh, because that's, well, it's more people we touch, more people. More people we touch, right. Mm -hmm. Um, other ideas have when been. I attended the Situated Educational Foundation fundraiser last Saturday night at um, Kennedy's, and uh, Michelle Lascano, who was the MC, um, made mention of COA on several occasions, and how the you know their purpose is not just to deal with grade school kids and high school kids, but that this is a life, life, lifelong life learning, learning uh, goal that they have. So she gave a real nice plug for for seeing that I was kind of. Well, that was my original thought. It's just that's a little bit limited. I, I just haven't figured out if that's a worthwhile 
you know, request to make is sort of seed money for more comprehensive lifelong learning, whether it's instructor payments, stipends, or marketing, publicity, that sort of thing. So that's why I'm still bantering. Um, and it'll change year to year. In a, in, right, it will come up each year. Musical instruments and lessons, you know, sort of something that, that would, we could also work with the students there in terms of um, learning something. So those are ideas I've had. Um, so we'll see what comes up or what comes out. Uh, I did get contacted also Joan Machino, Machino, who is another new representative, representative right? right? She yeah. was originally running for state senate and then decided to go a different route and became representative, I think. Uh, well, she is requesting assistance through a focus group for mm -hmm. the area that she is serving, Situate, Hull, Cohasset, Hingham, so-called, would like a few people from Situate through the Council on Aging to come, whether I bring staff or if anybody from here is interested. It is taking place in Cohasset at their Senior Center on Thursday, March 23rd, 8.39 in the morning, 8.30 or really 9 in the morning. So you can let me know if you're interested. Basically, she's just um, asking for input from people who might feel they have something to say about what seniors need and what she should be aware of as a representative. Um, the Situate Health Department, it's in the report, I won't go into it, but it's the third time they're bringing this mammography van somewhere. Now this time they collaborated with the Cohasset Health Department and it will be um, at St. Luke's on April 13th. But it's basically a traveling mammography yeah. if you need it and, and they really want it to be able to continue and be successful. So if anyone needs one or wants to help sort of spread the word so that people, uh, I think I included the number in the report where they can be contacted. We have posters here so they can call us, they can call the health department. It's a great thing, yeah. really a good service right here in town, easy, in and out, takes a half an hour. Um, I'll skip a couple of things, but update. Oh, the Situate, the Harbor Community Building, maybe it's worth mentioning here. We can probably deal with it next month as well when Marty is back. Um, but I don't know if anyone saw the Board of Selectmen meeting, so the idea of our formally being moved into that building is tabled currently. But our use of the building is pending um, once the library has vacated. But that's been moved back a little bit, so right now it's the end of May that um, the library will still be oh, moving. Oh really? Mm -hmm. Potentially, mm -hmm. yeah. It was supposed to be the end of April now. Well, just to say that they vacated the building completely and it might become available to I us. Yeah. Initially, just like it was before, a supplemental space, um, but there's still discussion to be had and you know things to be considered. So um, at least that whether we can tweak that a little bit and um, things can be done to make it viable for us. The time frame, you know, is still uncertain. So that's part of the issue, certainly for me, just to think about how long we would be there and then how much money can be put into making that a viable facility. But, um, you know, I talked with Mara briefly by email and, and she's supportive of course of that and, th and they all were to different degrees but it was uncertain as to exactly the direction they want us to take with that building. So just thought I would mention that. Uh, but next month probably would be good to talk more and if anybody has thoughts you know, at some point we should be able to bring them up. I don't know if it's mm -hmm. tonight. John's on his way by the way. Mm -hmm. Um, we are, we did accept an intern also from Bridgewater State who starts next week with us in our outreach. So Jenny will probably take her under her wing a bit. She's only here eight hours a week for five weeks, but they needed to, she needed to fulfill an obligation and you know, why not? Yeah. She's right. lovely, right. it's great. She's in the social work program, so it'll be nice. Awesome. Awesome. Um, so tomorrow night I mentioned, uh, Lisa may mention when she does little just quick about trips that are being planned that people seem to love. Um, I will also mention, nicely enough, we got a contact through, actually Kim Ryan referred him to us, but also he, his daughter is a Situate resident and he is, so he's related to the Feenies who people may know, but an author of Celebrating the Impossible Dream, 1967 Red Sox, the birth of Red Sox Nation, so Herb Crehan is coming to talk with us in May, do a presentation, do a cafe talk. Um, 
He's done it for many other COAs, and I think it's going to be fabulous. So glad to have him, and it's nice to have this kind of a topic and celebrity, and you know, I think there'll be a lot of interest in that. Moving on quickly to Jean's report. Um, just comparing the numbers from January and February. Now she put in the duplicated numbers, which means rides. Okay, so keep in mind these are number of rides, not necessarily numbers of riders. Okay. So, so that number is not here in this particular instance, but I talked to the Board of Selectmen the other night about that too. Like if I had 6,870 6, rides for the year, let's say. That might have been, and don't quote me because I didn't bring those notes to the meeting, but 250 riders all throughout the year for various purposes. So that's how it works. Um, and Jenny's report, again, she combined both February and January since we hadn't met in February, but the duplicated numbers are all the meetings and connections they had with people over the course of the two months, so that's 143 interactions. Um, but the clients actually assisted throughout those very those many um, times of 62. So um, well that's that's a, a good number. A lot of that, of course, given the season, was fuel assistance assistance. <laughs> um, but it varies. And then lastly, nicely enough, I have Lisa here with me tonight. So everybody's met Lisa, I think, and again, she's activities and volunteers, and it's a big job for 25 hours a week, but um, gets a lot done, and people have complimented us on the number of programs we're able to offer, and certainly that has a lot to do with Lisa's energy oh. and abilities. Thank you, and it's like in supporting getting it done, Linda. Um, I'll let you, my, I have a lot of narrative. I'll let you guys read that. <laughs> Bedtime reading. Yes, tonight, you know, before you go to bed, you can read all about the lovely things that happened in January and February. Um, so just a summary of, you know, was in the newsletter. And January and February, we, I think we've accomplished a lot considering the weather. Yep, a little weather hiccup. The people yeah. that go away for the winter that yep. aren't participating. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so, it's nice to keep things going for those mm -hmm. that are around, even though Absolutely. sometimes it can be challenging figuring out who's coming and numbers. Yep. Um, and then, um, so for up for upcoming, or to the flower show, maybe what we're doing. Yep, the flower show, um, March Friday, March twenty fourth. We had such an overwhelming interest in it that um, Linda was able to coordinate with Gatra to have a bus come in through Gatra. Through Gatra, so they really did the work, I guess, a Bloom charter bus, so we're going to try that for the first time. So we can take as, know, as many as 40? Oh, as many as 56, the, actually, if but we, if we, we can get more to have 40. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we have 40 tickets to the flower show right now. We could possibly have more than 40, mm -hmm. um, but we thought that would be about um, what we, mm -hmm. the interest how, how level. How much are the tickets, Lisa? At twenty six dollars, which includes the ticket to the flower show as well as the transportation. And the transportation. That's yeah. So deal. the original trip was only going to be twelve with the van. So this will we'll get we'll get there. We opened it up to Norwell um, because they had a trip scheduled, but it was um, they couldn't get enough for for their bus. So hopefully that will help them out. Good. And help us out get our numbers yep. to pay for the bus. So it's popular, really. Yeah. Trips have been good. Yeah, and we did a couple shows in. And we try and keep our trips in the winter local, so uh, the James Library um, and the Center for the Arts in right. Norwell, yep. um, they have some fabulous programs mm -hmm. and they came in and reached out to us and they're regularly offering free tickets for seniors. Um, so I can be in contact with them pretty close to the show date to either have six tickets or even a dozen depending upon you know how they're doing. Um, so we had, I think, at least 15 people go. Uh, We've got something going on right day. now. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we do have something coming up with them as well. We also had a group go to the company theater in Norwell. So with the weather and, you know, just booking the van, it's nice to stay local but still offer some things. Um, and you want to talk about the Irish night coming up? Oh, I did. Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's done. It's closed. It's <laughs> closed. Tomorrow night, yeah. Yep. Tomorrow night, River Club, no snow. Mm -hmm. A little cold, maybe, but <laughs> be fine. Irish and Trio, we're happy to have them. Lisa, always looking for additional help. 
volunteer. Yes. Yes. Always looking for additional volunteers. Yes. I took an application today, as a matter of fact. Yes. I'd like to say we also had a call today for someone that's interested in being a visitor with our friendly visitor program. Mm -hmm. So there's always people um, expressing interest, and we're, but it's, it seems like we're always, the minute we bring someone on, Someone we lose somebody else. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lose someone. So yeah. I, I, I I'm, I'm usually like jumping up and down for about thirty seconds, <laughs> and then someone and then calls you, and you says, hit the, yeah. "Hit the ground." Again. I broke my leg, or I'm going on vacation, or yeah. I have a surgery. You know, yeah. to take care of my shoulder, That's true. and um, just you know, things come up. Mm -hmm. So. Um, thank you. Like. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Thank so, you, yeah, Lisa. So please call. We'd love to have you. It's just oftentimes it's just a few hours a week. Um, okay. Thanks for your all your work. Thank you. Um, to my left, we have Chief Murphy, correct, from the Situate Fire Department. <laughs> yes. Um, and we asked him to come in, and he's on a tight schedule, so I'm gonna I want to hop to uh, Chief just to give us an idea what what's going on with your new home. So a new home, I uh, just left there a little while ago. It's just about <laughs> done. It's um, scheduled to be fully occupied by uh, March 20th. We're actually going to probably be in there a little bit earlier in the fire side. Our dispatch center, communications center, is uh, supposed to be the cutover. The new 911 system, which is done by the state, the cutover is uh, next Wednesday, which is the 15th. So at that point, um, the technology, what's going on now, all the would all the be flowing through there, flowing through there. Okay. So the enhanced 911 system. So now cell phones, they can actually spot you if you're on a cell phone in the woods, you lost your phone's on, they can actually spot you on a screen oh. and tell you where you are, we can go to you. So a lot of capabilities for lost children, whatever it may be, uh, out in boats, so it's an enhanced system that they're doing throughout the state, and we're in the earlier stages. This happens to coordinate now with our new system, our new building, so we don't want to put an old system in a new building and come yeah. back and change it in six months, so yeah. we have the opportunity to get this going up uh, fairly quickly, and um, so the technology in this building is going to be for the dispatch, for our internal efficiencies is going to be very good. So we're looking forward to that. We're still working out of a written log book at the station here. And it's, yeah. it's uh, we've been doing it, we make it work, but Change. this technology now to make things happen, we're looking for records management. Also on our town website for the uh, emergency management, we have a form you can fill out. So if somebody needs help during storms, somebody that's disabled or just wants to let mm -hmm. us know, listen, we're here, we need help. We're trying to get that, working with the state to try and get a better form that you can fill out online. Uh -huh. And we can actually upload it into our system okay. so we know who may need help out there. And, and, and anytime, always call. Sure. But even if it's like a storm coming in, coastal yeah. storm the day before, listen, I have some, I may so need some help. We'll, we'll, we'll coordinate with mm -hmm. uh, Linda. Is that a state <coughs> website emergency system? Well, we're trying to find out. We want to be consistent with required. MEMA, what they okay. do. And there's been some questions on the forms that we have. And so I reached out to a woman at MEMA, and uh, mm -hmm. we're coordinating with them to try to get the best um, okay. standard form, but also to mm -hmm. be able to fill it out online mm -hmm. and to make sure we have you in a data bank that if we need to reach out to you or if you need to reach us, mm -hmm. uh, we know who needs who needs who's so would we also be able to input from here, or we'd, I hope we'd so, refer? Yeah, yeah. I want to coordinate you. with you yeah. uh, to make this happen. So this is something we can work together on. Awesome. Some people <coughs> might not be able to do it from home, so they might need to come That's here correct. to do an input. Oh, yeah, yep. that yep. you could then so that they well, could be sent to, to you. It. Correct. It so. can be done by paper form, printed off too. That's the way it's done now. But we want to improve that because all of a sudden somebody can do this, and I can take care of this in two minutes. I get a computer in front of me, but filling it out getting to the station. So we want to make it as easy as possible. And we, the key is to have as many people use it as possible yeah. that need to use it. Mm -hmm. So the, the need is there. We're, uh, we're able to help you out, know who you are. And uh, you know, in all our storm stuff, we're trying to, to become more efficient. So we can get that into our next newsletter. Sure. Yeah. Right. I'll have Elena coordinate that. Okay. She's helping out in that too. So, um, and so the new building, it's uh, pretty much done. Some of the furniture that's being brought in this week, the final touches and dispatch. Um, but I uh, was just through there. It's, it's it's there. So we're excited about it. It's been a long truck. We've been working on this for about mm -hmm. five years now, yeah. and we do appreciate everybody's support on this. So it's well needed, and it's going to be um, there for the next hopefully 50, 60, yeah. 70 years to, to help us do a better job helping you. And that's the goal, to help everybody out. My in the West End, they have a lot to gain from this because, you know, just for example, right now in the West End, the Far West End, our Engine 3 takes six to eight minutes to get there. Uh, station 1, a an ambulance is three to four minutes behind. So you could be, in this day and age, 10 to 12 minutes for an ambulance, which is way too long. So the ability to put an ambulance up there, two minutes closer, now in five to six minutes, we could have an ambulance and engine at your door. So better service, time mm -hmm. is life. Mm -hmm. So that's the capabilities, the biggest capabilities of response times 
in the uh, for both fire whatever it is yep. fire yeah. EMS yeah. you know um, so we're excited about that you know the opportunity to help everyone to be more efficient more effective and um, you know there's also an EOC up there which is a slash training a meeting space there'll be some public meeting space up there mm -hmm. for an opportunity mm -hmm. to do some trainings mm -hmm. there so um, it's going to bring a lot of good things to our community. We've been talking about this since the children died on Hadley Road uh, in 1995. So it's been a long time. A lot of people put a lot of effort into it, and we appreciate that. So, um, But we're knocking on the door. I think we'll actually be in there on the 15th, too, just because of the ability to communicate with our station. We're closing down. may not be as, 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 uh, as good as it should be. So we may be moving up there the 15th. And we're ready to go. Okay. You know, the apparatus, and everything's yeah. ready to go in our It's really getting the communications part of it tightened up. And, and so uh, when when are the police come in? They'll be moving in too, and they'll probably have be, they'll Same be time frame? they'll be totally in the twentieth. So, so and as will you be? Yeah, we have less to move because we're moving to a satellite station. They're moving everything. Got oh. So they're going to be moving okay. over days. We could probably have most of what we need up there in a day. Our uh, biggest oh. things are our apparatus, oh. our purse, you know. So I okay. mean, uh, and some equipment will be going up there too. Yeah. But um, you know, the station up there is, is is quite small, so we don't have a lot of stuff. I see. Okay. So um, there's a triage unit there too. So there's a triage room going up there. You know, we talked on, on about the changes in medical down the road. They're they're expecting uh, about 40 percent of people who go to the hospital now may not be going to the hospital down the road. You may be going to a, your primary doctor doctor, a uh, health care unit, the hospital getting treated on scene or treated at home. So I think there's going to be a lot of confusion on that. Are people going to be really relying on the fire department paramedics mm -hmm. to do an evaluation? Mm -hmm. And at some point we'll probably have like an iPad or something like that communicating with a doctor at the hospital while you're in our triage unit. So live, yeah. you say, all right, what are your yes, symptoms? Sir. What do we yeah, find? What's the EKG say? This and that. Mm -hmm. And the doctor will determine you should go here, here, or here. So that's what's going to happen in the future. So we want to be prepared for that. At the same time, we want to try to um, have one additional, take one of our offices at Station 1, do the same thing, a triage unit there. So you can walk into a fire station and say, listen, I'm not feeling well. Can you tell me, A, what's going on? Try to help me and where I should go. So that's the key to having some, some of the efficiencies going forward. And it's a matter of time. There's some states already doing that. So. That's uh, that's coming down the road. The triage room is key. So it's basically like a small doctor's office. Same thing. You go into a doctor's office. It's not big, but you know we have an EKG there, um, a monitor, um, be able to check you up pretty much any way a doctor can preliminary, obviously, um, and then deciding where you should go well, for the best care. Well, it was a year wow. ago, St. Patty's <laughs> Day, that I had an emergency surgery at Tufts Medical, and your paramedics. I wrote you a letter at the time. I'm Dale Baylog. Your Thank paramedics. You literally helped to save my life. I'm not being melodramatic, but they triaged me in the in the um, ambulance. Yes. Mm -hmm. And they couldn't have been more timely, etc., etc. and I will be eternally grateful. And that's why I can sit here and mouth off, because they helped <laughs> save my life. <laughs> and at the time, I going. wrote you a letter. <laughs> it, yeah, it, Dale, I do remember that. I mean, it was just incredible. Um, after a couple of previous emergency trips where they were just as nice, and but the third one was really a life or death situation. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, they do. We it. were old friends by the third trip. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate that compliment. Was, you know, they was, do. It was just a, 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 amazing. Yeah, they do a great job. Every call, every run, they're out there and doing their best. They want to make sure we help uh, everybody in need. And, and, and it's great to have our own firefighters and our own paramedics and EMTs in our own community because some communities have private ambulances. and you don't get that same bond, you don't get that same uh, commitment, I think, sometimes. And obviously the better response times are, you know, three to five minutes away, and we're going to be there to help you whatever you need. So, I th will the, uh, so this will definitely cut down on unnecessary trips to the hospitals, mm -hmm. right? So that's down the road, and a lot of this is driven by insurance. <laughs> you know, mm. it's all money. It's all money. Yeah. But uh, that's what's going to happen down the road. Because a lot of people say, you know what, I don't know where to go. I go to the hospital. You know, but the healthcare places up in like Norwell, Queen Anne's Corner, yep. there's probably going to be more and more of those popping up. Right, Doc? You figure they're going to be popping up everywhere. Yep. So, um, but yeah, we're always, if you have any questions, any doubts, whatever, either call, come to see us, call us, we'll come to see you. So, I mean, if you think you need to go to the hospital, by all means, call. If you want to just stop by and say, listen, I don't feel very good. Can you just check me out and maybe give me an evaluation? Give me an opinion, and we'll do that for you anytime. That's wow. Terrific. That's great. Yep, no. I think we talked about this months and months and months ago, but how many ambulances <laughs> will be on site? We have, um, we have two primary ambulances okay. right now. We have one backup, and um, 
So the goal is, you know, we have, we'll have at least, we, we have a day ambulance, two ambulances on during the day, one at night, and the night one, the second one we call back for, call personnel in. So at some point we hope to have uh, both ambulances running 24-7, to have one at station one full time, one at station three full time, okay. at least during the day initially. But, um, so like I said, right now with the station, having the ability to have more apparatus up there, more personnel, we're spreading our resources out. So now we can cover more of the town. So not only for an EMS in the West End, now you, you're also, if you have a fire up there, you show up with two guys in an engine, we're waiting for everybody else to come up. So now initially four people on scene in a fire, doing a rescue, whatever it is, um, it's better service, it's safer service, it's more effective. So that's that's what the station's gonna bring for long everybody. Overdue, right? It's long overdue, awesome. you know, but it's here and we're excited about it and we're happy to uh, and like I say, we're next happy week, to be in a new building. In. Yeah, but it, it's really about the service that we can provide. Um, and what stays so on First different. Parish? In terms First of Parish business. will stay there. Two of the per personnel from there will go up to the other station with an ambulance. You know, at least during the day now, and hopefully 24-7 down the mm -hmm. road. But that's the goal. And um, so again, we're spreading our resources out a little bit to better serve the town. And the station up by Town Hall? Station behind Town Hall will close. That's closing. Okay. And that's determined. That'll be determined by the town someday what to okay. do with that. But right now, that will no longer be a fire station. Yep. The first um, parish is all set. Right? First parish is staying. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. That'll stay. That's still our busiest station. So we'll uh, we'll stay there with the ambulance engine and the ladder truck and the captain's car. So, um, yeah. And we'll still have Humber Rock. We still have two down at Humber Rock 24/7. So got to take care of Humber Rock. Mm -hmm. So we don't have to move our vans yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, no, you don't have to move vans. That's we're all. That's always going to be a fire station. So yeah. this is, um, you know, like I said, a, a, a new station, a little bit bigger station, and again, to spread our resources out. As the butter, I want to welcome you to the neighborhood. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you all come to the block party this summer. Yeah, let's know. I've been to your house. I inspected your home one if time. If you need any sugar or anything, just come to the woods. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to cut down on the sugar. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on you. Uh, not a lot, a little bit. Um, you know, obviously, seniors in, in Situate have been generous in supporting lots of causes. Schools, police, fire. And I agree. My hope is that when the time comes that the senior center is becoming, looking like a real reality, that you know, we'll have the support from the, the fire department and the, and the, and the fire yeah, personnel. I'm not quite sure we will. I can guarantee it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I appreciate the seniors in the town. They've been here the longest, paying the taxes the most, and they deserve that more than anyone. So um, I can guarantee my vote. I know the others will Thank be supportive you. as well. So Thank we're you. looking forward to, to getting a resolution and a, in a, in a mm -hmm. home for you that you really need uh, for now and going forward. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank it's you, on tape, you know. It's yeah. on tape. <laughs> I, I didn't tell you that. You know, I know. You never renege. Does anybody have anything real quick for, for Chief? Because I know he's he's got to run. <laughs> I'm going to go pick up my daughter. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, thank you for having me. Oh, we, uh, want, we, we, wanted to, we wanted you to tell the audience, among other things, What's going on? Because yeah. everything's going live. Yeah, it's a lot Real happening soon. right now. There's a lot happening. Everybody's running around, but we're going to get it done next week and right. uh, get it opened up. And, you know, we'll get the kinks out as we go, but uh, we're looking forward to it. So Very let good. me ask you, I, I assume that those traffic lights will only be operating when there's an emergency? So give me a little education on that. There's yeah. a different, different uh, philosophy to the state now. So they're going to be off when nothing's happening. When we press the button to go out there, you're going to get a flashing yellow, and then it's going to go to a flashing red. Stay flashing red. It's not going to go to solid red. So it's a learning curve here. We're hoping it's different for people. The hope that they'll stop, and we're telling our apparatus, listen, proceed. Obviously, with caution on, onto 3A, but you know, until people really get the hang of it, that's what's going to happen. It'll go to a flashing yellow, then a flashing red. It'll be about a 45-second duration. Uh, with the light for us to get is out. Is that the right. same yeah. light yeah. system that we've got on our first parish now? No, it's not. No. Okay, so it's that's different. A solid light. It's different, and that's okay. what the uh, it's yeah. It's a state road, and that's what the state recommends. So that's okay. the guy. Let me go by. Okay. Right. Yeah, we'll have the sirens out there, but the lights themselves. You see a flash yellow, you know it's going to be followed by a flash red, quick flashing red. It's going to stay quick flashing red for 45 seconds. Yeah. Give us time to get out on the road, get to where we need to be, and then it'll go back to blank. Okay. Yeah, you know, it's it's different, uh, but in the end, I think it's going to be more effective than, than just, you know, having a yellow and somebody going through it and yeah. red. So that's the uh, that's the uh, lighting scheme. So if you see lights going on, stop. Yeah, so basically the red starts coming on, or even the yellow starts coming on. It's Like I say, you're Let going get 55 going. On, the, on that road, so yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, probably start hearing the sirens, though. <laughs> You'll hear the sirens. You know, we want to, you know, yeah, that'll, 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 we only use when we have to, but, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's something early on we have to be very aware of. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah.
So. Very good. All right, John. Well, we're, Thank you so we're much. thrilled that you're you're moving into a new place. Yeah, and, we appreciate um, it. Yep. Okay. You know, I saw your presentation to the Board of Selectmen on the, the, the video replay. I wasn't at the meeting. Okay. But what I found um, fascinating and, and so so in tune with what's going on is that your, your workstations for the dispatchers, they can stand. Yeah, or sit. Yeah, they, 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 you know, it, in, in the corporate world, when you sit yeah. all the time, it does a number on your back, yeah. you know, yeah. as we right. all know. Yeah. Just, they can but sit or stand, they the, can raise the and lower. The equipment yep. is just amazing for the dispatches. It's like so high tech, but they can stand if they want to. They can to. stand, so you're there. Sometimes you're there for a long time. You can be there right. for two shifts, 16 hours, yeah. so you know what? And actually, in the corporate world, it's starting to go that way now. Yeah, they are. Yeah. You know, they really are. They're yeah. elevated desk, yeah. so yeah, that's an option. I mean, they can jog in place. And it, they, it's, uh, it's I don't know about that, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> if they want to do I guess, right? <laughs> but they're able to move their workstation. Right. Yes. So they're able yes. to, and that's a big help. Yeah, and sometimes that's during those storms, you, we take we get 200 <coughs> runs sometimes during these storms. That's just fire. So, I mean, the police probably double that. So it's just uh, to be able to get up and down sometimes. Mm -hmm. right? it's, it's a, it's a um, necessity we need to have today. Very good. Thank Again, you. thanks for thank coming. You. Well, thank we you all for having it. me. We appreciate it. it. And good luck. Rest. We're very pleased thank to have you, you. Have you moving in. And yeah. Yeah. Good luck in the senior center. Yeah. You get my support. We're very good. Yeah. We'll, we'll see you, you soon. All right, Chief. Bye. Thank you so much. That Bye now. Great. Linda, I, I wanted to know if we had planned on, um, are we going to get copies of the budget? I thought we could put it on the agenda for, for next, next month. Right, 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 yeah. right. Um, I'm going to come back now to maybe, uh, I think everybody, we passed along the January minutes. If everybody wants to maybe just take a quick look at, at January minutes. Um, they came around in three separate pages, so they weren't stapled, but you should have pages one, two, three. Did you find a mistake? Yeah. <laughs> just calling me down. Already. <laughs> Seems like so long ago. <laughs> okay. It was. Yeah. Yes, it was. <laughs> That's why it's five eight. Are you entertaining motions? Uh, is everybody taking a look? Yes, I will. Uh, does anyone have any comments? Otherwise, no, does thank you, Janice. Comments or edits? Wonderful job. <laughs> Do you want to add? Do we forget a name? Um, I just to put. I thought Janice's first name. First name. Well, we should add that. Add the first one. I, I, I don't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> do I hear? Uh, do I have a motion to uh, yeah, approve the minutes? Community yes. Community Christmas. Thirty-one seniors submitted to receive twenty point nine able. Is that because of? Say it again. If you know me. It says thirty-one seniors submitted to receive a gift. Twenty-nine were able to receive because they were. Perhaps they couldn't deliver. Maybe they weren't. They to receive. I, I can't answer that question. Of course, that's Jenny's it's report, I think. Okay. Um, Unfortunately, they could have even passed away if they were going to some of the housing. Well, we would have known. We would, it's a fresh list, so we yeah. should have, you know, we would have known <coughs> that because it was a list that they provided through here. Mm -hmm. So I can't. I'll what, make your motion. Do I hear a motion to accept the minutes? Suspended animation here. <laughs> 
Do we have a second? I second. Very good. Uh, I think we're on to liaison updates. Joan? Can we? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh dear. I ended up paying like $400. Oh my God. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. <laughs> but, uh, so, social health services. So the February 7th meeting, uh, the legislation breakfast was very successful. There were nine legislators there in attendance. They had a great feedback from them and there were 45 people in attendance. So it was the best one they've had so far. And the presentation was given by Mike Ward and, and he, was, he mainly was the insight benefits of the group health insurance that covers all the employees in South Shore Elderly Services and he always gives a report. So that's what that was about. They still don't know what's going to happen with the health right. thing, mm -hmm. especially with affordable care. Uh, so then the March 7th meeting, uh, the governor has been in contact with Sandra, and uh, he made no cuts for seniors from home care, even though there's hearsay and there was things in the paper that he had made cuts. Mm -hmm. So I will read just a few things that she warned us to mention. And this was on February 17th. Uh, the Governor Baker filled a supplementary budget that provides an additional for 4.49 million for the 1910 to 630 home care purchase service account. We applaud the Governor's action to meet the needs of the enhanced home care program and to prevent waiting lists. We appreciate the work of the Elder Affairs in advocating for this much needed funding Governor Baker's action makes it clear that he does not want to see elders put on a waiting list for home care. So this is a big home care thing. So that was, and there's quite a bit in it, but that was the main thing uh, about that. Uh, South Shore Elder Services continues to grow. They have three more, they have 300 more clients. Huh. And they have a retirement page on the website for people 40, 50, and 60 years old to get an idea who's interested in what's going on with that age group and um and 2015 there were, there were four 47.8 million older adults living in the united states how many 47 million 47.8 wow. million And then with Math Health, um, this was on February 28th. Math Health signed a three-year contract with the Government Solution and Company to support its management and oversight of fees for service, long-term service and support. Program provided by more than 2,100 health care entries at an annual cost of 3.5 million. And there's more about that, but that was that was an interesting. The board presentation was given by Donna, and it was the same thing she did here ah, on the board, so I won't okay. go over oh. that. Um, yes, I won't mention that. She gave us a couple of papers, but the same thing. Hmm. But then Sandra had done something for each town, and she gave, uh, this is for the town of Situate, uh, a snapshot look at their programs for Situate. Mm -hmm. So I... Made copies. Made copies. Awesome. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Okay. I think there's one for everybody. Thank you. It's in color too. Ooh wee. <laughs> <laughs> and then the St. Luke's dinner is the 26th in time change, so it's not going to be docked till after 6:30. Right. So right. most seniors should be able to go. Daylight savings time this weekend. Right. This right. weekend. Yeah. And it's American chop suey, and they're going to have key lime pie squares. Oh. Wow. And then I don't know if you've gotten these yet. You haven't seen that. No, nope. a white cover. That's different. So I'll pass these. Pass them around, or keep them can here. Keep them. Keep them. Yeah, you can eat. No, these. These I, I, I we'll get a whole box. box. We'll I get picked a whole up box. these for the boy because they'll get a box. Okay. And uh, I left one at the Congregational Church at St. Luke, and then I'm going to, and I left one at the Methodist Church. Very good. Oh, that's it. You're everywhere, Joan. You're everywhere. Thank you, Joan. Thank you. And if everybody doesn't have one, they'll, they'll have some here. 
Oh, yeah, well, the, I you'll, I, I the council will get, will get a box shipped yes. here, probably, yeah. right? Okay. Did everybody get one I want? Yeah. You can have mine. I got a couple yeah. more. So I, you can have mine, too. I'll, I'll see one when the box comes in. Okay. Does everybody have one? No. Okay. Thank you, Joan. So, although I had what? included... Um, yeah, okay. Included Pam on my email, I didn't hear back from her either. Her friends. Okay. So, we can so why don't we move to Elaine? Okay, hey, I'm going to start with the Friends of Situate Seniors. Uh, oh, so you're doing the... F the I do both. Okay. <laughs> okay. I thought that was just the one time. No, it, um, I don't know when Betty's back, but until she's back, I'm okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, we are moving forward with our golf tournament on um, June 16th. We sent out Save the Date. Um, mailings to everybody that was involved with it last year, so we're just moving forward, getting everything organized for that. Um, the spaghetti dinner that we're having on April 1st, we are, we're limited to the number of tickets we can sell. Uh, I believe it's 90. Yes. 90, okay. Uh, so uh, once we hit 90, you don't get any spaghetti. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, can I interrupt? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Where the, the golf tournament's over at Sigil Country Club, correct? No, no, no we're not. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Where's, yeah. Where's, the, where's the spaghetti dinner? The uh, Congregational Church. Congregational Church. Okay. Yeah. And that's um, at five? Five o'clock. I did put it in our newsletter. So yeah. It's there. Yeah, it was in the two places. Yeah. We, we really color. appreciate all the our <laughs> free publicity. <laughs> um, and I think, you know, we're, we're moving into our season, but we're not there yet, so. Um, what seasons? Well, the, usually during the summer and the fall is when we start our, do a lot of our fundraising efforts. We don't do a lot through the winter um, because we don't want to go outside in the snow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so there are several activities coming up in the um, summer and in the fall that we will be um, going. Elaine, are you planning on at the spaghetti dinner having any you know fundraising activity, selling an auction? There'll be raffles. Just raffles. Raffle, okay. Yeah. Um, we're um, we have to do a lot of extra paperwork now with raffles because of the state requirements for the uh, gaming and lottery mm -hmm. commission. So we have to do a lot of extra paperwork, which mm -hmm. we weren't aware of before, but we're all on board with it now, so we know what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't have to do that for it. It's mm -hmm. not as complex, but um, if it's a drawing, we have a good we have good news for you. Oh, no, <laughs> if it's a drawing, if, if it's a what it, it, isn't, that, isn't that what it is? If it's um, a drawing, you don't need to you, if you worry about taxes. Drawing, if it's a raffle, drawing, you do. You don't have to pay those taxes back. If, if it's a raffle, or raffle, you, you it's taxable. You get Build your tax, you know. You don't get billed, you got to report it. <laughs> right. No, you report it, right. but then you have to pay your taxes yeah. on right. that. But if you say it's it, a drawing, drawing you, you there's, no, there's no tax liability. Drawing. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we might, well, in April, the spaghetti dinner was a raffle, but um, we'll <laughs> look at that going yeah. forward. Sure. Um, we found that I mean, out. It's not we found a, that out for Rotary. It's not a ton, 5% tax, so it's not that, that much. Of that's thing, why the silent auctions gain popularity, yeah, because they don't have to. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you, can, you can generate a lot more money with a silent auction, but it's a lot more paperwork, and you have to be able to oh. document exactly what you got and what the value was and all that. But we'll do that. Words matter. Mm -hmm. they, they do, and mm -hmm. I, I had no idea that if you put them in the drawing. Well, for those people attending the spaghetti and meatball dinner, for the drawing, <laughs> we will be raffling off. You have the choice of six wonderful raffle baskets, and please bring a dollar for a ticket or six for five. And we'll figure out the rest of it. The money, the money part we'll of it. We'll figure out the task. Okay. Uh -huh. So, um, that's it, I believe, with FOSS, I don't think there's anything else. Okay. Okay. And then the Commission on Disabilities. Yep. Um, we are currently actively encouraging participation in what the Massachusetts Office of Discrimination is holding. Is it holding a call for art, um, breaking barriers, and it's for um, 
anybody in the state of Massachusetts over the age of 18, they don't have to be disabled, any person can participate in submitting a drawing to, this, to the Mass Commission on Disability, um, and they, there will be a jury art showing hmm. and, and, nice. and a, an award uh, mm -hmm. award awarded. Um, the contest goes from February 1st to August 1st, um, so we're encouraging anybody that wants to. I, I just have one of these, but I can pa pass it around so people can look at it. Um, it's, it's so you have to be like over 18 to submit artwork? Yes, you okay. have to be 18 to do the artwork. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But you don't have but to be disabled? No. Anyone? No. Anybody can submit artwork. Right, right. Maybe Joanne Papandreas and her art class folks would a be anybody, um, anybody can do it. So mm -hmm. um, I'm having my grandson do it. He's at the, um, uh, he's in the high school at the I Excel program. They keep changing the names of the programs. Okay. Um, so they're going to have that art club nice. doing submissions. Um, but we want to propose to get it out to the rest of the town, too. So. And where are the pieces of art going to be displayed? At the office? Mass Office of Discrimination. Uh-huh. In downtown Is that at the State House? Mm -hmm. Near the State House? Are they near the State House? Wherever the, um, I don't know, the address, I think, is on the card. Mm -hmm. um, Just kidding. But they have a list of who the, the um, Jury members mm -hmm. are that will be conducting the mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, voting and and environment. So it, it's it's um, it's a wonderful opportunity, and we're trying to promote encouragement that people would participate and and break the barriers that are there with discrimination with not with discrimination with disabilities. Oh, one um, and, and if anybody can tell me what the correct terminology is to use for special needs, disabled, but it, it changes every day and I never know what I'm supposed to say. But I think you're on track. Challenge. We want everybody to be involved, I mean, without, with or without. Some. That's one, but that doesn't cover everything. I don't think there is any one. No, I don't think that's the whole thing. I mean, you know, it'd be, I, I'm just, I, I'm a member of the that commission. I, I need glasses and I have hearing aids, so I'm disabled. Yeah. You know, it's just yeah. people don't look at it that way. But you need to focus on not just the obvious. Mm -hmm. So um, we are continuing to follow the um, efforts on uh, on the sidewalks with Country Way and Tilden Road that um, do not currently necessarily meet the mm -hmm. requirements of the Architectural Access Board. Um, they, ha they have been addressed and there's been a complaint filed and it's being forwarded by the, it's being addressed by the town's legal counsel. Um, not quite sure what they're going to do, but with the complaint they have to do something. So, mm -hmm. which is, it's, which is a good thing. Um, there's going, there is a pilot project being um, set up with GATRA at the Jenkins School, with the principal of the Jenkins School, um, to transport special I'm going special needs students mm -hmm. from um, who want to stay after school for um, a special project for tutoring for sure. Uh, and then they need transportation anything that's after going school. on after school. Yep. They don't. They're not able to be yeah. transported home right. by right. the regular buses right. because the buses are gone. So Gatro will do that. If they cannot come into the parking lot um, 30 minutes before school starts or 30 minutes after school starts. So 30 minutes later, they could come in and pick up students to take them home after school. They also will be um, going to be picking up students who may need to, who may become ill and need to be transported home because there's nobody at home that can come get them. They can also transport the caretaker from home who may not have a vehicle to the school to pick up the student and then get them back home. So this is a pilot project. Um, uh, the Commission on Disabilities is going to be funding it for the Jenkins School. Uh, that's just the area that I was going to say, is so it I only Jenkins or is it other schools? But this is a pilot. Right, it's a pilot. Yeah, yeah we just want to see if it's going to work, if, yeah. if it's utilized. Yeah. Um, I would imagine it would be utilized. Mm -hmm. um, so they're engaging a third party contractor to provide the rides? Gantro is doing Get, it. Well, right, but you mean the sloop? 
or Gatra is engaged Gatra in the third party. Gatra will be doing party. it with us, yeah. They're, they're the ones that are going to be doing it. But I'm wondering about the actual van and driver that they're using. The actual drivers are all Corey certified and CPI certified. I don't know exactly which van they'll be using. Okay. But so we have the sloop. Right, right, which right. now is doing the deviated yep. route if someone mm -hmm. has to call for that. I would imagine we have be a different our one because the, the one that goes to the soup has got a prescribed schedule. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Well, yes, but the deviated route has been worked into that schedule right. for them. But, but this for would only be so many callers, and then we have our van. So I'm just, if we hadn't, if Gatra hadn't come up with the deviated route option, then we would have had to be required to find a way to provide the same service to those disabled who couldn't find their, who, who weren't able to get to the route. So I'm just wondering if you were having to do the same thing, the third party contractor with funding. That's all, that's, that's all I was asking. I, I, I can't answer that. Okay. I know that John McLaughlin is working directly with Getra okay. and, um, okay. Bit. Okay. Whether Great. That's it. Thanks. Um, Elaine, maybe you could ask John to um, email Linda. It's, oh, it, just, I'm sure it will, it'll be worked out. It's fine. Yeah, I'll yeah, get the no. answer. I just, I, I thought can get you had more it. information on this. Okay. Um, so that's basically what we've been up to um, with the commission. Um, I, I think that that we need to um, work, collaborate more closely with the council on aging, because a lot of the presentations that you're doing. Um, are something that some of the members of our commission say, well, we should put this program on. Well, they just had that at the Council on Aging. Why don't we to do it again? Well, that's why you're here, and that's why right, you but, know, you're but, hearing um, this. Yeah, so I just, I mean, I just was picking up on a mm -hmm. lot of the things that you're doing that I'm going to bring back to the group and say, let's do it with them instead of having separate events. It doesn't make sense to do it separately. Mm -hmm. You get that, you know, whether they're thinking it's just limited to the aging when it's counseling aging, which is it's not, not, but so I, I just that struck me today. So I would okay, bring it back and let them know. Okay, anybody have any questions for Elaine? Um, Thank you, Elaine. Yeah. I want to, I know everybody probably read it, but um, it says that these are going to be you can view them online, mm -hmm. the paintings. Mm -hmm. Oh, an online that. gallery. Mm. So. <laughs> Don't have to go to one Ashburton place. After <laughs> <all>. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to think that that could be looped through. The artwork could be looped through Citroen High School for art well, students. Well, that they want. Have to be 18 yeah. and but okay. they've got to be over 18, 18, right? Okay. Right. So that's where it's coming yeah. to the art yeah. club, which isn't the Good. IXL program. Okay. Um, are, are doing that, and there are you know there are mm -hmm. we there are so many <coughs> high school students that are. So <coughs> that yes. put on, yes. but they're not 18. Right. Uh, That's another group that I was on, we had somebody design our logo for us, and she's absolutely phenomenal, but she's a sophomore. You know, yeah. I'm close to 18. Yeah, when you said so 18, I thought, ooh, that, that eliminates a lot of kids yeah. that would, be, yeah. be, would maybe love to do this. But. Also love the seniors. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. Um, but since it seems to be filled with artists, uh, I mean, Lucille, you know better, but I mean, it just seems like there are a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know, between, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe Joe we Wayne could should really bring this Right, I, yeah, I said that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll um, take a walk when it's not snowing down the harbor to, to the Arts Association and talk to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have an extra one. We could leave this picture. We have, yeah. We have, oh, you have one, okay. You have one? We have, we got some. Oh, okay, great. And great. someone's already reached out to us on it. Okay, yeah. okay. So we're going to... Super. Does anyone have any other business that we would think about for next month? Marty's on vacation this week, just that's why he's not here, and I didn't think so. It was too late to have one of the others attend. So maybe we'll, we'll, we'll add the budget next month. Maybe we can walk through that. Mm -hmm. And otherwise, does anybody else? We were have going any? to ask Chief Stewart just to <laughs> to give us equal, the police equal time. Yeah, sure. Oh, yeah. Well, he had something else, right? So, he, so uh, I can ask. Him. Yeah, for April. Yeah. Okay. Does anybody else have any other issues, business? Yeah, JD. Um, I just want to put a plug in for um, pickleball. I know Lynn was talking about pickleball for the last uh, two years since I've been involved here. And, I think I've gone to four sessions, 
and Jean is the pickleball champ of Citroen, I'll tell you. Um, you know, I think we're getting like four and a quarter, three quarters, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen people showing up. Some seems like some new people yeah. are beginning to come in. So, you know, I would encourage anyone who's listening to this who can stand on two feet, hold a racket, to come, come to Jenkins on Monday and Wednesday and, and participate. It's it's a lot of fun. It, it doesn't take a whole lot of, you don't have to be a you know, champion tennis player or a badminton player. Um, it, you know, there are people slow that are, version of tennis and both. That yeah. is a slower version. And there are people there, all skill levels. There are some very, very good players. There are some mm -hmm. beginners. I, you know, I've only played four times, so I can sometimes hit the ball. Um, <laughs> but I just wanted to throw this out. Um, yeah. I've had a couple people approach me. I said, you know, I heard about this pickleball thing, and they're people significantly younger, probably like in their early 50s, and they want to know, gee, is it just a council on aging thing, or is it, you know, am I allowed to go? You know, so if, if we're trying to encourage intergenerational mm -hmm. activity, um, you know, I think it would be nice if, I mean, is it okay to, to you know, put the offer out to, or, or anybody wants to? Someone's of offered to, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay, great. Yeah. Although, I, I guess I will, I will question a little bit, A, we have four potential playing courts right. and we have 16 paddles and so many balls, which we so bought. So we're limited so by equipment. And the paddles have now been used for two years, just saying. You know, I don't mm. know how they're holding up. I haven't been for a little while. Um, not that we can't order more. The idea is that maybe as people start to do it regularly, they would want to buy their own paddle because yeah. naturally yeah. those are just really beginner paddles and we didn't know yeah. how well yeah. they would work. And and I've now talked about this with the Recreation Department, and I like the fact that it is our program, and I think it gives us some exposure to, oh. to doing recreation that is, you know, fun and mm -hmm. um, accessible. Uh, sometimes, when there's too much of a range, and, and I think I wrote about this in one of my last newsletter articles, just the idea that it is great to have the range of players, and that they're all integrated and, and happy to have the different skill levels and the different ages but anyway there's been sometimes players are different mm -hmm. and I don't want to discourage yeah. some of the older right. when we get younger and so how we you know it's open it's yeah. certainly open yeah. um, I recreation mean, I know yeah. Mars coming and, and she's learning well, how to play. It's not uncommon to have a few people sitting out because you know if, if we're going to set up Three net, which I four. Yeah, but I, I'm only going to bring three four set up. Well, yeah. So, so, so four times three, uh, four, six, yeah. sixteen. So, if you have twenty people, you know, the people might want to play a game or two and then sit out yeah. and take sure. a break. Okay. So, you know, it's not like I think everyone who goes feels like they have to be on the court all the time. <coughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and they've been they've been very, um, very generous. They've been cooperative out. thus yeah. far about that. But it yeah. has, you know, it hasn't been a long line of people, so they're only there for an, what is it now, an hour and forty-five minutes, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So, yes, um, point well taken. It, it's great. The more the community knows about it. Uh, two years ago, I, I offered to have it outside it somewhere and would have taped a court for them. Or I think I, I drew chalk on one, but <laughs> nobody wanted to play outside at that point. <laughs> now, the more popular it gets, you know, they probably want to play outside, so and I think yeah, well, and you play indoors. It's it started yeah. once a week, now it's twice a week. Today, that's that's right. We mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you imagine if you hit the ball today. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> 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 the um, rec department's going to be going to eight. So yes, they are. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if that fits more. So, um, you know, they will have that use of that gymnasium. That's interesting. <coughs> I mean, I, that's true. There's some retrofitting going on. They may not be there until September or October, actually. Yeah. So um, we'll be sharing space still with them for the, you know, however long mm -hmm. that takes mm -hmm. for them to get. So I suppose that could be something that they end up. Because it's pickleball only at night now? Four to six. So it's, like it's the only place we can get and the only time we right. can get. They may yeah. decide to adopt that as well. There, that would be fine. Great. Yeah. Well, I don't encourage anyone to come enjoy it. Mm -hmm. A lot of fun. Good. And get a little exercise too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to close with a couple of things. Uh, I'm just I'm looking at all these booklets all over the place. So I'm going to remind people if if anyone is interested in uh, the the new release from the Social Elder Services, they could make request here. Mm -hmm. Right.
Central Rotary Club just put out a new town phone book, and I think the council will have a box, mm -hmm. right? We may very well have it. Yeah. So if anybody needs a phone book, um, reminder that daylight savings time again this weekend. Put your put your clocks ahead. Uh, and I'm if anybody has any other issues or um, input, I'm going to just close. Well, I, just, I would like to mention yep. um, egotistically, perhaps, but um, last week was my first column in the Mariner. Um, I'm writing a column called The Senior Scene. It's not an SCOA column. It's not a boss column. The title of it suggested in, by myself and the editor, Greg Mathis, um, he's the editor for all of the papers. There's no single editor now for the Mariner. Greg Mathis is in charge of all of the Mariners all around everywhere here on the South Shore. It's a, the title of it is The Senior Scene. And it's written by myself as a senior. And I, you know, I just, you know, I'm, I, it takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And so I've had some positive feedback uh, but I would like people to be aware that it's going to be every other week in the Mariner. But and week? every other month. Every, no, every other week. Oh, really? I, I, oh, every other week. Oh, I oh, want it. Work. My suggestion was once a month, mm -hmm. and wow. the editor has. That's a lot. I know. <laughs> <laughs> the word revision is like floating through my head, um, but the editor has a senior mother. She's a young senior, but he thinks that the senior issues seniors should be made more aware of. So he said to me every other week, and I said, well, I'll give it a try, but it's a, it's, it's a lot of work. Mm. Well, and needless to say, you've known that I did start to write one, and because of the time it does take, I haven't done it as regularly as I would like. So that is something that usually does come out of the Council on Aging. and. Right, but if, this is, I'm not representing the Council on Aging, I'm not representing no, boss. Right. No, that's, I'm representing that's Dale Baylog as yeah. a senior. So are and you open so to ideas? To and, and yes, and anyone that read, oh yeah, suggestions, but anyone that read the first column, it's very good. he suggested that I introduce myself, and it, it's been about eight years that I've been active with the seniors, and then I became a senior. So I feel that I have the enthusiasm and some background. I work the Congo lunch every Thursday. I've been on the board for five and a half years. And I just, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not trying to change the world. I'm just, I would like situate residents to be more aware of. It, because we're not doing that. All the mariners or is it just uh, No, no, just the situate mariner. Okay. But Greg Mathis is the editor of all the right. mariners. Yeah, yeah. Well, good and he called okay. you? He called you? So no, it was my idea, oh, right. which okay. he jumped on, and uh -huh. we had coffee yeah. at Dunkin' Donuts, my extended living room. <laughs> so you can read Dale's column every every other week. Every other week in the Mariner. Okay. Very good. Um, I'm just going to close with uh, some situate facts here that I pulled from some state data that uh, we came across, Linda and I, back in November. Um, as we probably mentioned in the past, a significant portion of our population in situate is 65 years and older, but of that population, over 30% of it is over 80. So over 80? 30, 32 percent of the seniors in situate are over are, are over the age of 80. Yeah. So with, with that, <laughs> I will take the I will take <laughs> yeah. With that, I will take a motion to adjourn. Do I hear? I make a motion. And a second. I second it. I'm going to call my trick by Jerry Tall. Very good. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. We'll see you next month or, or tomorrow night.